right, 2024 Mustang Dark Horse. It's Chris here. I'm, I'm pretty excited. Today is an autocross day. Um, honestly, I've never been more excited to get a car out on the autocross course. And honestly, the reason for that, there's a lot of uh, conflicting info or conflicting opinions, I should say. Everything's subjective about the Dark Horse, right? Um, Challenger's gone, supposedly. Charger, they might be bringing it back. Uh, Camaro's gone. Last one went off the assembly line literally a couple days ago. Um, and that leaves Mustang, right? And the, the Dark Horse is the pinnacle of S650 Mustang right now. We've all heard that there's more coming down the pipeline, and I would expect nothing less from Ford. Um, but when it comes to the best S650 out there, Dark Horse with the handling pack um, has proven to be superior. Uh, so today's going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how the car performs. It is completely bone stock. I haven't done anything to it. I have a street set up, um, some Belgians uh, with Nitto tires. I pulled those off, put the factory Trofeos back on for autocross. So a lot of people are curious how this compares to the GT350, to the Mach 1, you know, to those trim levels that are above the GT from S550 and obviously in comparison to the S650. I raced the GT350 quite a bit. It had full state of suspension underneath it. I started out stock, got the suspension on there pretty quick. Uh, I mean, max camber, race tires, uh, race brake pads, um, and really pushed the car out. It was kind of a show and go sort of sort of build. Nothing power wise, uh, honestly. I, I went through an engine, just factory bone stock, left me on the side of the road. So I wanted to keep that warranty intact. But uh, all in all. Uh, it was an amazing car. There was something extremely special about the GT350. The team that put that put that together uh, at Ford Performance did an amazing job. Uh, the flat plane crank, it, in my opinion, goes down in history as, as one of the best engines the, the, that was ever put in a Mustang uh, production. And we all know the downsides of it. Personally, it put me on the side of the road. The Dark Horse, however, just everything's been touched and refined. Um, there's There's been some criticism out there that, you know, this is just a reskinned S550. And to an extent in some areas, yes, but everything on this S650 has been massaged. You know, there, there were a lot of things that have been massaged in this car. Most notably, the two things that stand out to me the most, the brakes which I could talk at length about those. I'm loving the videos. Engineering Explained has an amazing video about uh, the braking system on uh, the Mustang, compares it to a couple other cars, really dives into the engineering behind it and how much tires do play in that. And that's true, the Trofeos are insanely sticky. We saw what Thrall House had to say about that as well, um, taking it around the track and how uh, he even said that if they took the Trofeos off the Dark Horse and put it on the Mach 1, it's possible the Mach 1 could beat the Dark Horse. They didn't do it. I'm not sure. I'd be curious to see the results of that. Um, but I can tell you the braking is much, much better. Now, the other thing, Magneride, Magneride, Magneride. Um, if you're a hardcore road racer, you probably want to skip through this section. For most of you out there that are street going, you're probably not going to remove the Magneride, right? Um, you're getting it for its all-in-one nature, right? You, all you need to do is just change the driving mode and you change the, the damping of the car. It's some pretty advanced stuff. That's obviously been out for Ford in, uh, since the 350 came out in 2016. But this is a heck of a level up over any S550 Magneride car that I've felt. Now, obviously there are hard parts that have changed too um, in terms of uh, suspension springs and sway bars and the actual hard parts, but the body control that this car has from the factory is much, much better than any S550 I've felt. Um, so, oh my God, we gotta do a quick pull here, right? Flat 
foot shifting. Super smooth, like unbelievably smooth. But anyways, there's a lot of things to look forward to today. I'm really excited to go over them, see exactly what we've got. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how this stacks up against the 350 and the Mach 1. Um, had plenty of seat time with the Mach 1, but obviously I've owned uh, a 350 and, and put 20,000 miles on in the time that I did own it, race and street. So uh, it's gonna be interesting, interesting to see how it stacks up and if it's worth uh, the higher price point that these dark horses are, are pulling. Uh, stay tuned to find out. Alright, so there is a lot to talk about when it comes to how the autocross went. Um, I, I'm speechless. This car, on the surface, obviously it's an all new reskin, but and underneath, a lot of the same components that we've seen in the S550s, but all the little tweaks that Ford made to this car come together in a package that is very impressive there's there's just i'm i'm speechless like the car I, I haven't driven a stock 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 car in in a while most of the cars have been stita you know stita suspension stita modified um including my gt350 that had everything stita underneath dual rate springs camber plates irs subframe braces bushing support system alignment kit vertical links uh tow links uh G-Track brace, the, the whole the whole nine yards. Um, this car, bone stock. Stock alignment, didn't mess with the camera plates. I just wanted to see where it was at, bone stock. We'll get going here. The other caveat to this is I have not driven in an autocross event since April of this year. Um, it's December now. Uh, had, a, had a kid this year, super exciting stuff, but uh, it's been a, been a very busy year, um, so I haven't had the chance to actually uh, be able to go and race. Uh, so that makes me a little bit rusty. There was a little bit of a learning curve getting back into this, but uh, coming out of the 350, I just told you all the modifications on it. In addition to that, the race setup was a, a set of 19 by 11 uh, Stita Trident wheels all the way around with a one inch spacer up front and a 315 square set of Falcon RT660s. Um, one of the top 200 treadwear tires that you want to run if you want to be competitive in autocross. I do want to say that this might be a stretch. I didn't test them back to back. I'm going off of feeling and memory and the old calibrated butt dyno. Um, I gotta say the Falcons feel stickier than these Trofeos do in an autocross setting. How the car felt today. Um, 
I had to remind myself that the car is stock spring, stock sway bars, bone stock. So it's going to be a lot more softly sprung. There's going to be more body weight. There's going to be more things that uh, cause the car to kind of roll with the motions. And, and uh, with weight transfer like that, um, can somewhat unsettle the car, but obviously the Magneride and all that good stuff is supposed to control the additional weight that these cars do weigh. Um, I gotta say, I'm really, really, really impressed. Um, as a complete package and how this car drives, it's not just the tires. The tires are great. The tires are amazing. They're the best factory tires that I think Ford's ever put on a Mustang. Um, these, these beat the Cup 2s. I'll say that. They're, these The Trofeo RSs are on the same playing field as the Cup 2 R, which is the same tire that you see on the 911 GT3 RS, to give you an idea. The, the GT350 Rs, the Mach 1 handling packs, those had Cup 2s. Those were a step down. Um, so these are sticky, and they they stick. But again, I really don't think they, they, they're not quite as sticky as what you would see with an AO52. I haven't felt the new Bridgestones yet. Um, they aren't as quite as sticky as that RT660. But again, super impressive in an autocross setting. Now, given all of that, the additional body roll and things like that, the car handled extremely well. Um, I gotta say, in an autocross situation, when you have all of those different inputs going on so quickly, so quickly at the same time, steering inputs, brake, gas, steer, brake, gas, left, right, um, the car is getting tossed around all over the place. Unlike a road course situation where everything is nice and smooth, right? Um, nice smooth inputs. Autocross is jerky and it's fast. Um, so typically when you do see those softly sprung cars, they can get a little out of sorts sometimes. I cannot say that for the dark horse handling pack at least. It, <laughs> it was very, very impressive. In addition to that, the steering, I gotta say in the moment, I didn't feel much difference. Um, I think maybe if I were in a road course situation where I did have more time to feel for the input and understand that, you know, there's a little bit more uh, input that's, or a little bit less input that's required to get the action out of the front tires that you're looking for, um, the feel was a little bit lackluster. Um, everyone's been saying it. It is, it is true. I do wish there was a little bit more steering feel, but with these E-Pass uh, steering systems, there's only so much feedback that you can get um, on, the, on the steering wheel, right? Um, so a little bit to be desired there, but the, the ratio was good. I was able to plant the car where I wanted. I didn't have issues, um, you know, hitting cones that I normally wouldn't hit in certain situations and things like that. Um, I was able to plant the car where I wanted and the rear followed. Um, there was definitely more compliance in the rear uh, through the Magneride damping than, uh, than the 350 did stock or modified. Um, I think the tires had a little bit to do with that, but not much. Um, because I could, I could be on corner exit, especially that sweeper in the back, I could be on corner exit, and the car was sticking, and I was rolling on throttle. I wasn't punching it, but I was rolling on throttle, a little bit of slip angle in the rear. The rear would just come out, just enough to set me up into that next slalom. Um, it did everything it was supposed to do. Now, the next thing, brakes. Oh my gosh. Um, to put it in perspective, the GT350, it also has six pistons, six pistons in the front. It also has four pistons in the rear. The brakes on the Dark Horse are, and the GT Performance Package, and the EcoBoost Performance Package, are the same brakes, with the, exception, with the exception of the two piece rotors up front. The Dark Horse brakes are impeccable, impeccable. Um, I, I've got nothing but amazing things to say. It's, it's amazing that a factory pad compound is able to um, do all the nice things that a street pad is supposed to do, not make noise, not a ton of dust. Yeah, sure, they're, they are dusty, but in comparison to a track brake pad, it's still not that much dust. Um, and do all the things that you want it to do, 
can still brake that well. The car doesn't dive as much when you're braking into breaking into a corner. Um, I think that may be a combination to do with not only the brake bias itself, but also uh, the, the Magneride calibration that Ford put in the car. Maybe there's a little bit more beef up front when you do hit the brakes, gonna keep the car further, further up in the air. Now let's talk about times. Um, so in an autocross, for those of you that aren't, may not be familiar with autocrosses, um, it's, a, it's a gateway drug <laughs> into racing. It really is. Um, and, uh, and, and it's cheap, it's fun, it's a great way to feel the limits of your car, feel the limits of, of yourself as a driver, learn, all in a safe environment, and the worst thing you do is spin out and hit a couple cones. It really is a great place to do it. If you're not too familiar with autocrosses, the course changes every single time you're out there. That keeps it fair. So there's a course walk for you to get familiar with the course and throughout the day, you're able to get more runs in, get more familiar with the course and try to increase your time, right? But that makes the playing field even for everybody that is racing. So my benchmark, uh, Donald Lowe, super, super nice guy. Him and I, oh, uh, we've always had fun banter back and forth. He drives a Camaro SS1 LE. It's an F-stock car, so stock suspension. Uh, he added camber. He's got 19 by, I think, 11s all the way around, or 19 by 10s um, with the Falcon RT660 tires. To put it in perspective, him and I, when we last raced, and the many races before that, in the G when I was in the GT350, which had all the parts I told you about, him and I were always neck and neck. I'd beat him a little bit, then he'd beat me a little bit at the next event, and I'd beat him a little bit at the next event, just depending on how the course was laid up and everything else. If he had a bad day and I had a good day, or vice versa. We were always neck and neck, and he's kind of always been my constant, my benchmark, because uh, he is such a smooth, smooth, talented driver. So we had seven runs today. Uh, the fastest Donald ran was a 51.78. On one of my runs this afternoon, I was able to inch out a 51.77. So a hundredth of a second difference. I think 11 thousandths of a second difference. That says so much. That says so much because I had a lot of suspension work under that GT350. Um, I had th over three and a half degrees of negative camber in the front of that 350. I haven't touched the camber plates on this dark horse at all. And so it's the street alignment. They're still stock, everything's stock. And I was able to keep up with Donald. And he and him and I talked afterwards and, and you know, he didn't have a, a terribly bad day or anything. Um, it was just on par. So that tells me that the dark horse, at least from a performance standpoint, in, versus, uh, in an autocross performance situation with the GT350 and all the parts I had on it, including much of uh, 315 square, the RT660s, which were a stickier tire, um, this car is on par, bone stock. So just wait when you start tweaking this, add a little bit more camber, get some stickier tires, get springs added on, add a little bit more spring rate so the car stays up rather than rolling all over the place. Um, we've, you know, it's, it, it, it's a Blake canvas, that's why I love these Mustangs, <laughs> but that says volumes, volumes on how good this car is out of the box. Now, in comparison to the Mach 1, the Mach 1, I've always driven the Mach 1 slower when, when uh, I was driving Stita's Mach 1 out at autocross events and things like that with full suspension underneath, the same suspension package as the 350. I was always a little bit slower in the Mach 1. Not exactly sure why. It was a 10R80 car, that possibly could be it, but... Uh, the 350 was always just a little bit more natural feeling to me. I think with the right parts, the Mach 1 and the right driver, especially with the Tremec, I think the 10 or 80 was very limiting um, in an autocross situation. Had it been the Tremec, maybe, uh, maybe it would have been faster, maybe it would have been able to drive it on par with this and the 350. Um, but in reality, the Mach 1 is a great grand touring car, has a lot of the bits and pieces from the 350. You know, if you get the handling pack, you got the big wide tires and everything else. But the Dark Horse, like, 
it's just got so many little changes that just add up to <laughs> add up to an insane package um, now granted don't get me wrong the price point is a lot it's a lot of money I'm not gonna lie um, is it worth it? That's ultimately up to you, especially when you consider used prices for 350s and things like that. I gotta say, I did have to put an engine in my 350. Um, thankfully, uh, Ford certified pre-owned warranty took care of it because um, everything was stock. I didn't have anything modified powertrain wise, but um, you know that is an inherent issue with those Voodoo's. It's a very, very special engine, but it does come with that unusually large thorn in its side. Um, whereas the tried and true Coyote, obviously it's generation four. We haven't seen these on the road for a long time, but it's generation four. Coyote's been around forever and they only keep making it better. Um, so we will see how this progresses over time. But today, uh, I was fifth for all time for the whole day. Uh, PAX, I believe I was number six. And the car's bone stock. It's not modified. I didn't even add more camber to it. Um, the tires had a lot to do with it for sure, but for some of those autocross tires out there, after feeling the grip levels, um, they're on par with a Falcon RT660 or a Yokohama AO52. But uh, it, it's it's not just tires. It's There's a lot of things they tweaked here that make this car as as quick as it is, as deceptively quick as it is, given how heavy it is. It's going to be exciting to see exactly how this car progresses. I'm excited to wrench on it, tweak on it, um, get out, race it more, drive it more, go to different events, take it to Tail of the Dragon, Ponies of the Smokies, Mustang Week, things like that, um, and see exactly how it progresses and how you know we can make it a little bit faster. But um, to be honest, this is the first time I've ever done a video like this. Uh, for my own personal channel. So um, if you do like to receive content in this way on, on YouTube, uh, please, please comment below and let me know. Hit the subscribe button um, if you do want to see more content like this. Um, I normally just do a Facebook post or an Instagram post to kind of explain things out in text um, with a video of the run. But uh, I thought this would be a fun way to, to kind of show you how the day went. Um, and show you how these cars compare. So let me know in the comments below. Um, as always, like, subscribe, um, hit that notification bell, and uh, we'll see you next time.